Hi LEGO fans! Where does he get those wonderful toys? Well, LEGO has done it again. After last year's 1989 Batmobile, we have another epic creation inspired by Tim Burton's Batman. Was that really 31 years ago? Today, I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, wall mounting, and reviewing set number 76161, the 1989 Batwing from LEGO DC Super Heroes. Not to be confused with the superhero of the same name, this is a 2,363 piece recreation of Batman's custom built air combat vehicle from the 1989 movie. It looks fully armoured, but apparently can be taken down by a novelty oversized handgun. The near 2,400 piece part count includes three minifigures themed on the 1989 movie. We have the Man Bat complete with sculpted cape, the Joker in this fantastic mime costume, and a Lawrence the Boombox Goon. The packaging is suitably dark and moody, and has the premium look and feel that LEGO is using to attract more lucrative adult fans. If the 18 plus recommended age range doesn't make the target audience clear, the price tag of 200 euros, 200 US dollars, or 180 Great British Pounds certainly does. The artwork on the back of the box is equally sleek, minimalist, and moody. Here we have more product photography, which shows the Batwing beautifully lit. The thing that really intrigues me about the Batwing is that it's designed to be wall-mounted. As somebody who's really struggling for display space, I can definitely get behind that idea. Also impressive are the dimensions of this set. It's half a meter or almost 20 inches long, and if you mount it on the included display stand, it's 23 centimeters or 9 inches tall. Speaking of stands, just like the 1989 Batmobile, we have a display stand for the minifigures. That's quite enough of me yammering on about the box, let's open up this thing and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got 22 bags of Lego numbered for stages 1 through 13, a 362 page instruction booklet, two random bags of plates and beams, and what everybody looks forward to in a $200 box of LEGO, a sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build the 1989 Batwing, and today this is going to be a 3 minute speed build!
And here is the completed 76161 1989 Batwing from LEGO DC Super Heroes. This turned out to be a little bit bigger and more impressive than I expected. The build was reasonably challenging, although a little repetitive at times. Build time today was a total of 4 hours and 38 minutes. As well as the impressive Batwing, we get three minifigures on a display stand. Lawrence the Boombox Goon, the Joker in his mime costume, and I'm Batman. Yes, of course we have a Batman in the 1989 costume. We'll take a close up look at these guys later in the video, and compare each one to the equivalent character in the movie. We're also going to be doing some DIY, checking out a brand new LEGO element, and wall mounting this big black beauty. Before then, let's take a detailed look at the Batwing. If you're one of those people that has way too much display space and not enough LEGO, then this is the set for you. This thing is 23 inches or 58 centimeters wide. Thankfully it comes with a stand and also a display plaque. This should save me some research. Batwing has a maximum speed of 1406 miles per hour, a surprisingly precise cruising speed of 796.6 miles per hour, it is a compact 18 foot 4 inches long, stands 6 foot high with landing gear extended, landing gear is not included, see terms and conditions, has a wingspan of 21 feet and 4 inches, and is powered by two turbofan engines. Weaponry includes two side mounted miniguns and four wing mounted missile launchers. We'll take a look at those bad boys in just a second. The stands on these large Lego sets always make me quite nervous, but this one is surprisingly sturdy. Sure it wobbles about, but it would take some serious abuse to make this thing fall over. The stand is pretty wide, which makes it very stable. Despite the precarious looking angle, this is surprisingly solid. In fact, it's a shame I'm not going to use this. The underside of the build is pretty much unremarkable until you consider how much stuff is inside that is not black. Underneath the black exterior is a rigid frame made of Technic pieces in grey with splashes of colour. There are some elegantly designed features under the wings, but mostly those are there to keep it flush when wall mounted. You'll also notice a couple of decorative fins tucked away. The actual contact point between the Batwing and the stand is pretty small. Taking this thing off the stand is definitely a lot easier than putting it back on. Without the stand you get a better sense of just how flat this build is. To give you a sense of scale, here's Shiny Darth. This thing is not very tall at all, and it gets even less tall if you fold down the fins. If you're planning on wall mounting this, it is only going to stand about 4 inches proud of the wall. But that silhouette mounted against the wall is going to be so impressive. The shape of this thing is absolutely epic and recreates the bat signal. It's virtually identical to the bat wing we saw in the 1989 movie, but possibly a little bit less wide. The edges of the wings are particularly impressive and wrap around the model. These are built as one long piece and then attached afterwards. This end snaps into place, and at the other end we have a small post which keeps the wing tightly connected. Peeling away the edge of the wing reveals an easter egg. There's a printed bat symbol hidden away within the wing. Another easter egg hidden away deep in the wing is a 3x3 heart element. The designers really wanted to show their love for Batman. Helping the wings to wrap around the outside of the model, we also have some silicon bands. There's one here, and another one towards the back of the wing. Other impressive details include 43 of these modified 1x2 grill pieces on each of the wings. Of course the problem with all of the shiny black elements is all of these fingerprints. I imagine this thing is also going to be a dust magnet. If Batman ever feels the need to slow down, we have air brakes on each wing. I guess you could use the air brakes to display minifigures when wall mounting the Batwing. Other features include the Batwing's landing lights, and then we have the impressive weapons. Mounted on either side of the cockpit, we have a very impressive looking minigun. We also have a total of four missile launchers, but LEGO resisted the temptation to make those functional. I kind of expected these would be flick missiles. These bad boys are not mentioned on the plaque, but I'm pretty sure they are machine guns. You'll find a matching pair mounted at the business end of the Batwing. There really is some nice symmetry in this build. The designers used a lot of wing elements in this construction. In fact, I think they used all of the wing elements that LEGO currently produce. At the front here you can see them being used to create an air intake. Even more impressive are the stacked elements used at the back. The textured detail at the back of the Batwing is simply stunning. Helping to create the impressive silhouette, the edges of the Batwing are mostly stud free. The notable exception is up front where we have some studs on the bat ears. I think tiles here would have spoiled the outline. 
Towards the back of the Batwing, for stability, we have an impressive pair of fins. Each one is made of multiple elements and has a very pleasing outline. These can also be angled, which is particularly useful if you're going to wall mount this. In the centre of the Batwing, we have a cockpit with protective canopy. This can be easily removed. It's made from a bunch of different elements, including some really nice smoked transparent pieces. We don't really get a good look at the interior of the Batwing in the movie. That said, I think the designers have done a good job of imagining how this would look. The controls are pretty basic, but we do have a functioning throttle and joystick. I also like the graphic showing Batman targeting the Joker just before he pulls out his impressive weapon. Most of the stickering apart from the fact plaque is actually within the cockpit. Here we have a bunch more controls and a screen which is monitoring the balloons releasing Smilex. No screen on the other side, but we do have a bunch more controls and some kind of intercom system. The seat is definitely not a minifigure scale, but is quite body hugging. It can also be adjusted to get various degrees of gangster lean. Behind the seat we have a hinged panel marked Bat Engine. Inside we find a pair of crowbars. These are actually included to help you remove the seat. This reveals a brand new element which is actually a hook for wall mounting the Batwing. We'll see that in action in a few minutes. At risk of paraphrasing the Joker, the Batwing is truly a wonderful toy. Except it's not a toy of course because it's aimed at serious adult collectors. So we have an absolutely epic 76161 Batwing. But that is not all. Oh no, that is not all. We have three magnificent minifigures complete with a display stand. That display stand gives me a sense of deja vu. It's exactly the same as the one that came with the 1989 Batmobile. This represents the top of Gotham Cathedral from which the Joker fell to his death. The interesting little statues on either side represent the gargoyles. This follically challenged fellow is Lawrence the Boombox Goon. He's one of the Joker's seven leading goons and is a large imposing bold guy with a handlebar moustache. Lawrence carries a large boombox to provide musical accompaniment to the Joker's evil deeds. A great example would be when the gang were defacing art at the Flugelheim Museum to the music of Prince. The legs are standard black minifigure legs, but we have this fantastically printed torso. This shows Lawrence wearing his uniform of a purple bomber jacket complete with Joker logo. We've got some nice detail on there for the pockets, and also that unusual tie that Lawrence wears. It's some kind of string tie but incorporating dice. Also accurate to the movie costume, we have three Jokers on the sleeve. There is some more printing around the back showing the seams of the jacket and also the hood. The details of the costume are absolutely fantastic and really do nail the character and the costume from the movie. The quality of the facial print is equally impressive and shows an impassive Lawrence the Goon. The handlebar moustache and sunglasses are absolutely perfect. Next we have Jack Napier, better known as the Joker, who is dressed as a street mime. It's a fantastic costume that only appears very briefly in the movie. The Joker wears this costume in order to assassinate Vinny Ricorso. Hello Vinny, it's your uncle Bingo! Time to pay the check! His accessory is a quill pen which he used to slash the throat of Vinny Ricorso. The attention to detail in the costume is absolutely fantastic. We've got white legs overprinted with this grey and black gingham design, and then this beautifully printed torso. All of the details are there including the tie, the flower, the vest and the long coat. In fact if we spin him around we can see the fabric tails for the coat. The printing on the back is less impressive but does show some creases in the jacket. The facial print is absolutely fantastic and really captures the maniacal Joker. I love that smile complete with a small amount of lipstick in the middle. It's exactly as the Joker appeared in the movie. We also have the Joker's top hat but it's a shame that Lego didn't provide some green hair. The Joker does remove his hat in this short scene. Once again the designers really did pay attention to the costume in the movie. Finally for the minifigures, I'm Batman. Yes we know, stop interrupting. Batman's accessory is the Batarang in his favourite colour black. While this is a fantastic Batman minifigure, it is as far as I can tell the same one we got with the 1989 Batmobile. The legs are unprinted and standard minifigure legs. But the most impressive and eye-catching part of the 1989 Batman is that sculpted cape. It's a single moulded piece made out of flexible plastic but has this beautiful organic look and feel to it. It incorporates the cowl, complete with eyes for the hole, and then we have a printed Batman logo on the front. The printing on the torso is pretty much what you'd expect. Batman's body is sculpted beyond belief and has impressive abs. 
Adding to the detail of the print, we have this metallic gold utility belt. More printing around the back picks out Batman's physique and the back of the metallic gold utility belt. Although we don't really see it, there is a printed face. This shows Bruce Wayne with a wry smile, and we also have an alternate, more neutral expression. Like other LEGO Batman figures, we have this kind of dumb white headband. It only really makes sense when you put the cowl on and we see the whites of the eyes. While it is disappointing that we don't get an exclusive Batman to go with the 1989 Batwing, LEGO have done a really good job with this minifigure. In fact, all three minifigures with this set are particularly nice. I think my favourite has to be Lawrence the Boombox Goon. Now the only thing I don't like about this set is that it takes up way too much space when it's on that display stand. Thankfully LEGO thought of that, so it's now time to move to the DIY section of the video. And there you have it, one Batwing attached to one wall. I may not be as good at drilling holes as I am at building LEGO, but this is one impressive wall feature. Just be sure to use a long enough screw because it does need to stick out quite a way for the Batwing to actually hook onto it. The end result, however, is awesome! So that was the 76161 1989 Batwing from LEGO DC Super Heroes. As the Joker put it so succinctly, this thing is a wonderful toy. But more importantly, it makes a fantastic display piece, whether you decide to put it on the wall, or if you've got a mansion as big as Bruce Wayne and enough space to display this. The three minifigures were great quality, and I love the inclusion of the Joker in that mime costume. It's a niche scene, but I love it when LEGO pick out on that kind of detail. Whether you display it on the stand or on the wall, this really complements the 1989 Batmobile and the Tumblr. This is most definitely not a toy and is something you'll want to display. While I'm sure people much younger than 18 plus could put this together, the end result is definitely a thing that's more likely to appeal to adult collectors. I really enjoyed putting this together, and I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. Most importantly, if you do like videos like this, tell your friends to subscribe. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe, and remember, always be yourself unless you can be Batman. In which case, be Batman!